Hi, welcome back to how to write a platform a game in Java. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create enemies. So let me show you what uh, this will look like. So this is going to create the uh, the spider enemy here that wa is animated. It walks back and forth. It has a left boundary that it doesn't pass. It has a right boundary that also doesn't pass. Uh, and then that's it. That's uh, basically what we're trying to do. Okay, so let me show you the code we had last time. So uh, last time we created uh, an animated sprite class. Uh, this um, this allows us to have a, an array of images so that we can uh, pick the images that uh, that uh, the, the sprite is currently in, and then uh, based on that the, the state of that sprite, uh, we're gonna pick the correct image for that uh, to the display on the screen. Uh, and um, so again, just quickly here, the the main method here is the update animation, and update animation basically every five frame it will pick the direction that the sprite is moving figure out which images to pick so if it's moving right for example then it's gonna pick this array and then advance to the next image basically uh, just cycle through uh, the indices of the images and just continuously display that array of images and then when it gets to the end of the array it go back to, to zero um, and so we're basically picking out the uh, the image at the index and then uh, put that be uh, assign that as the current image. Again, the current image is the image that is displaying at this current frame. We were able to do that. Uh, use the coin uh, that we create a coin class that extend animate sprite, and then uh, we had a, a coin animation that we saw last time. So uh, in this video, we're going to create an enemy class. Again, we're going to take advantage of this animated sprite class. Uh, we use uh, all the methods that we we wrote here. So this animated class will be a little bit uh, also very simple. It's going to extend the animated sprite. Uh, it has a new some new uh, variables about the left boundary and the right boundary. So that way, this enemy is going to go back and forth between those two boundaries uh, because it is it's extending or inheriting from animated sprite. It has all of these array that we'll need. Uh, we're, we're not going to need this one. We'll just use the move left and move right images. Um, okay, so. Uh, so here's all my images. The well, walk left. There's three images for walk left, three for walk right, uh, for the spider. And so here, I again, we super as usual. We create a, a move left, uh, three images, and then we load, uh, load those. Same thing, move right. Uh, I also load those. You can do four loops here if you have a lot of images. But uh, and then we set the current images. We're gonna uh, put it at um, move right is the default. So the the spider is gonna initially go to the these three images, the move right images. So that's the current images, and then it's gonna face right, the right facing. Again, this is from the animated sprite class, the direction here, um, and then the the left boundary is. So this uh, constructor takes an, uh, one of the images, the the scale, the left boundary, and the right boundary of the uh, of the enemy that you want, and so we set the those to be the boundary left and boundary right. Um, properties uh, variables there, and then we're gonna because this is facing right. We're gonna give it a positive uh, velocity of uh, two, say two or three. If you want to make it go faster, you can make it uh, this a little bit higher. But it's gonna initially go right. Okay, so enemy is gonna inherit all of those uh, properties, all those methods, in particular at update animation and, and all these methods. So so that's been done for us. We don't have to worry about it. It's, the logic here is, is correct. Um, so all we need to do is really add in an update method so that it knows how to move, and this is very easy. Well, we uh, this enemy class inherits from animate animated sprite, which inherit from sprite. So it already actually inherit the uh, the update method. This is the, the the just adding velocity to position. So we're gonna we still need to move the spider. So we need to here we need to call uh, we use our code by super update. So this will call the update of sprite to move the spider, and then we need to also uh, so we we here overriding the update method of sprite. So we first call the update method. We're using our, our update uh, code, and then we're going to add a few more logic to this, and that is that if uh, let's see if get left if I get the left side of the of the sprite, uh, and that's equal to or less than the boundary left. In other words, if the spider um, left side of the spider is less than the the boundary uh, left, then we need to first of all fix it by set left set the left side of the spider to be equal to 
boundary left. So it's possible that we might have like passed this boundary by a little bit, by a few pixels. So fix the fix that, make it exactly equal to the boundary, and then uh, change the velocity by negating negating the horizontal velocity. So this would change direction essentially. And then same thing for the other case. If uh, get right is greater than or equal to the boundary right, and we do the same thing here. We uh, set right is boundary right. Fix the fix so that it doesn't go past the boundary, and then uh, change direction again. Multiply by negative one will change the direction. So that's it. That's the only thing we need to add. And again, you see here the power of inheritance, where the animated sprite class uh, did ev does everything for us. And then uh, we now we have to create the enemy. So I just here I have here some code already. Uh, so I, I created some variable that can help me figure out where everything is. That might be helpful later. Uh, so, because I usually have a 800 by 600, so I create here a width, which is uh, the sprite size, which is 50 times 16. That's uh, 800, and then 50 times 12 is 600. Uh, so that's the width and height of the, the window. And then I create here a variable called ground level, um, so that way I know where the ground level is. Again, I think a lot of this actually will be used in the next video, but. Um, and then uh, here's the height, height minus the sprite size would be my, my ground level. Just remember that the y-axis is inverted, so height is the bottom. Subtract the sprite 50 would be the, the ground level of where the player is standing. Yeah, I think I don't really need that until later. But So anyway, here uh, I create a, a spider pre uh, p-image. And I create an enemy. So here's the enemy. We're gonna This is declaring the enemy. And then... Um, I initialize the spider by picking one of the image, uh, so spider walk right one, for example. So we have well, one image there, uh, and then you remember create platform. This is where we we uh, set up all of our platforms. So I add a new one here that if the number is six, so if I add a six here, we're gonna create a spider there. So uh, so I need to figure out what the left boundary is and the right boundary is. So you remember that uh, there's a CSV file here that um, we talked about in that previous video about creating the stage map and so in this CSV file I add in um, a number 6 to um, to denote the spider so here's the here's a spider here um, and these are the coins for example so I put the spider there uh, and so based on that position oh, I can figure out so based on the column of that position I can figure out the the left boundary of uh, of my of my spider, and then also the right boundary is simply the left boundary plus of in this case four uh, four tiles. So let me show you why it's four tiles. So here's if so here's where I put the spider. This is on top of a platform. If it goes back, notice this one tile, two tile, three, four tiles. So I want it to go back and forth between these four tiles. So that's why once I figure out the left boundary. Uh, I, the right boundary is simply the left boundary plus uh, 4 times the sprite size, 4 times 50. Uh, so once I have the left and the right boundary, I can now create my enemy. Enemy is equal to new enemy. I put in the spider image that we initialized earlier. The spider image has a width of 72 pixels, so I scale it down so that it's 50. So 50, that's the scaling factor. Here's the left boundary of the spider. Here's the right boundary of the spider. This will create my spider uh, object. Uh, and then I need to center X it, center Y it by again. This is this is the same thing as previously done, right? Uh, this is the position of the where the object should be. So this is where the position of the the spider. And then uh, we need to make sure we display everything. So let's go to the draw method. Uh, so we've initialized our enemy. So now I want to here display my enemy and also update my enemy right that's the update method is going to call the update method that we just wrote we just override uh, to move it and, and to also go back to left go left and right and then finally we need to also uh, update animation and update animation is uh, the method we inherited from the animated sprite class this uh, this will allow us to uh, uh, animate our, our spider our enemy so that's basically it. Uh, let's check to make sure this works. There it is. 
We haven't done uh, collision yet, actually, because uh, we're gonna do collision uh, in the next video when we do the when we animate the player and create a, a new player class. Then we will we'll check collision and resolve some of that. But there it is. Okay, thanks for watching.